Hey! Today we're doing lemon citrus bars. Well, citrus bars with any kind of citrus except all lime. You wouldn't want to do that, but we're going to get into that. Here they are already done. I did these on Tuesday. Maybe it was Wednesday. Wednesday on the San Diego show. So, oh, Neil wants a close-up. There you go. Just close-up real quick. There you go. Mm. Anyway. Mm. Neil's How many has some. Neil had? <laughs> <laughs> like four. Four. Anyway. Five. Um, Five. As you know, I do the San Diego uh, station CBS in the morning, and because everybody is not getting next to each other, keeping their distance, they're shooting things from people's homes. So I did the morning show this week from the kitchen, but you guys have been seeing this since last week. So we did a different angle. I've got a pot rack over there, and I'm standing over in that direction. And uh, Neil did not play cameraman that morning. I had to uh, do it all myself. So. Anyway, we're going to do these bars, and lemon bars are really great to do, and so are orange bars, or uh, blood orange are really good. So switch around the citrus. Whenever I say a certain citrus, if you want to use oranges and lemons together, it's good, anything like that. So what we have is our 9 by 13 or a 9 by 12 inch pan, baking pan. I do this with all of my... Uh, bar cookies or brownies sometimes if it's not the thick foil i will double it up and i'm gonna take it and mold the outside i think maida heater did this she was the first one yeah many of her books are really great she passed away last year at 102 years old iconic cookbook author her and her husband owned restaurants now you want this to just line the bottom and then you'll spray that and uh, we have our uh, this is a shortbread crust and then we have the filling so we're going to do the shortbread crust first which is uh butter that is room temperature and again you want to be able to squish it and that's room temperature is that regular salted butter unsalted <clears throat> and it's in the recipe all the different types of ingredients that we're going to use and the reason why we use unsalted is we don't know how much salt is in butter. And unsalted, there's no salt. And we don't want any salt in this recipe. So we take that and sugar, a little bit of sugar. And we're going to whip that up a little bit. Meanwhile, here's a lemon from our neighbor's tree. And here's our microplane. And we go across this way to gather the lemon zest. Now, all those different uh, television shows, they do it this way. If you go across it once and back, you're going to get the white pith, and the pith is bitter. The oils are all in the front, the top part of the skin. And, that's, and you can see how wet it is. And that's what we do. While that is whipping around, the flour still needs to go in. And this only bakes for 20 minutes. Now this will use... And we're going to dump all the flour in. We don't have to do it a little bit at a time. Oh, still have a little bit of sugar left. Pull that in. Slow. should bind up like cookie dough and while we're waiting for that we're going to take and do our filling just blend our filling up which is our egg yolks a lot of sugar on this this you can do all by hand wow. A lot of sugar, two cups of sugar. But if you figure two cups of sugar, it serves 16 people. It's not that much. 24 servings, I mean. We have flour, baking powder. Blend that up. This is our filling. Now, this is where you can use any kind of uh, juice you want. On the morning show this week, I did orange and lemon. The zest 
that you've zested, the oranges and lemons that you've zested, you can use those. And I need a quarter cup, which is about two of these. And these are great for your drain. <laughs> I noticed most people that don't know would put that in the other way. Oh, the lemon. see? Oh, see? Let me show you a close up. So you put it like that, and it pushes it inside out. Why, you, you would do it the other way? Yeah, I would do it the shape, you know, just the shape of it. Because I don't know any better, but and then we'll it makes sense. Blend that up. Now this will go on the bottom crust after the crust is done. Let's see where we're at. Okay. Scrape the edges of this. There's some melted or butter that's still on the edges. And then we will put this on the bottom. It's kind of like a dry shortbread cookie. Turn that up. And now we're going to take all this, put it in the bottom of our pan, and then we'll pat it down. And we'll bake this for 20 minutes. It's just like taking a cookie and baking it. Like that. Shake it, pat it. Make sure you don't see any foil on the bottom. And like I said, this will go in for 20 minutes. After this comes out, you're going to place, while it's hot, you'll place that filling on top. But you know what? I did not put in the filling yet some zest. So let me get some zest in there. See, right there. We're gonna put that in. Remember your timers. I was taught in pastry school we, to not use timers. And because we were supposed to use our, our nose to smell things, which I still smell a lot and I'll go, oh, the, no, I don't smell a lot. I can smell the aroma. <laughs> and so what, uh, when people say, how long do you bake that for? I say, oh, until it's done. That's what my professor would say. You never forget those things. So there's some zest. We're gonna take some lemon and some orange. Uh, the lime zest, really, I think limes are only good for key lime pie in cakes, unless you're doing a mojito cake, which I have a mojito pancake that I really love, that I created for the canola people up in Northern Canada. I call it Northern California. And there's our filling. So we're going to let that bake for the 20 minutes. When it comes out, I will pour that on top. All right, the 20 minutes has happened and our shortbread is done. And you'll see a little bit of uh, light brown. And when you do this, sometimes you might have to poke or press it down in case there might be a little piece that pops up air. Then our filling, like I said, we're gonna pour this on top. This will gel up and Make sure you just kind of smooth it with your hand, I mean with your spatula. Keep in mind this is still hot. So you're going to go back in the oven for about 22 minutes. So just a few minutes, not long enough for the oven to even cool down. Again, timer, 22 minutes. And then you act like you're on TV. Voila, done. So, we have lemon bars everywhere. So, here's the foil. I'm gonna undo this and show you how we do this. And put this on top, upside down, pull the pan up. What's really nice about this is now you aren't digging to get that one piece of brownie out or lemon bar, and it looks pretty clean. I'd still wash it though, but it's pretty good. And you're going to peel the foil back carefully. I like to refrigerate this. 
so it's firm when I do this. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of parchment paper on top. And let me get another board. And go back. So now it's back to the front. And see some will be a little soft. At this point, I take and go about half in my eye. Just take your eye and go half. Wash this each time. Get, get a clean blade or take a knife and go across. Then you go half again to get four. Just like that. And if you want 16, you'll do another four going this way. Or if you want 24, you'll go half and then three. See how this part, it has the sugar came up where here it didn't. And you can, uh, you're gonna put powdered sugar on top of all these. And they're all gonna look the same. Like that. And there is, so you've done six, 24 pieces total. And then you take your dredger. See these I cut a little different. Sometimes the sugar will go into the bar itself. So you'll want to add a little bit more on top before you serve them. They last, I put them in the fridge so they stay firm. This way they're uh, a little on the soft side. Enjoy the lemon bars. I'd like to thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have a great week. Oh, there Bye. goes Gil. See you later, take care.